Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be establishing a face side and a face edge on all three bits of this timber. Let's go. So planing a flat face on a bit of wood and planing a square edge is obviously very easy on a planer or joints or whatever. You just run it over the bed a few times, then you stick the flat face up against the square fence, run that through, and voila, you've got a face side and face edge. Unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that with a hand plane. There is a little bit of a knack to it. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this episode to the vice. So I'm going to start with this bit of oak, which is the middle laminate. So I just need to push my bench dogs up. I've actually got the bench pups still, so they're really short. I need to upgrade to the bench dog so I can actually reach them through the underside of the workbench. So get them in there and then clamp them between the dogs and just make sure that we're reading the grain correctly. There is no grain on here, so I won't even bother with that. If you want to know a little bit more about grain direction and all things like that, I did a video on reducing tear out with hand planes. So I'll put the link to that in the top corner. It will show you how to read grain direction on the edge here and also sharpening one of these bad boys and a standard plane to reduce tear out. So here we've got the face side, which we're going to plane down first. Don't worry too much if you remove those marks on there because we've got the little V on the face edge here that shows that is where the face side was. So let's just tidy it up to start with and get rid of all these saw marks on here. You might be able to see those medullary rays becoming a little bit more visible now. They look beautiful. Almost there, I've just got a little bit above this knot that I need to get rid of. Okay, so that's pretty much all cleaned up now. No saw marks on there and it's nice and smooth, but do not rely on that being perfectly flat because although we're able to get a plane across the entire surface, we can't guarantee if that surface is out of twist, which is a bit of a nightmare to remove. How do you remove that? Well, that is what the winding sticks do here. So on these winding sticks, you've got one face that's like a matte black colour and you've got a shiny silvery surface here. If you make these out of wood, make sure to make them out of contrasting materials. So say, I don't know, ash and walnut. But what you want to do is make sure you have one colour at the front and the opposite colour at the back. So here I've got silver at the front, black at the back, or you could just have it the other way around, black at the front, silver at the back. It also makes this a little bit easier if you put a board or something behind so you haven't got to read it against the background of whatever it is over here. What these winding sticks are going to do is if there is any twist in this board, it's going to amplify it and right out on these ends, it's going to really show it. So if I bend down now and sight along it, I can see if any of those sides of the winding sticks are poking up higher than the other. It is very difficult to focus at this point, but you've just got to get it as close as you can. Like, be really perfectionist about this. Annoyingly, this bit of oak is actually pretty perfect. Well, it's good for me, but for the demonstration purposes, that's quite bad. But if anything, this side here is sticking up like the tiniest amount, like a stupid amount that I could almost leave it. But we're going to be perfectionist about this. So get rid of those winding sticks. And because this side was higher here, it could also mean that this side was possibly high. So what we're going to do is get our plane and we're just going to plane diagonally. Now, the way I've sharpened this blade is with a small curve on it. So it means that wherever I centre that plane on the wood, it's going to take the material from there and it's not going to take any material from the edges of the blade. So next to the cut, I'll show you how to do that in my video, how to get a stupidly sharp edge on a plane blade. So have a look at that links in the top corner now. But I'm going to traverse from this high spot to that high spot and it's probably only going to take one shaving. There we go, that'll probably be it. Now the other thing to do here, because that's lowered this surface and lowered this surface, we might have a small bump in the middle of this bit of wood. So when we put the winding stick on, it might start rocking. So another advantage with the curve on the blade is that I can go straight down the middle and only take the material from that centre section. Without leaving any tracks on the edges here, I can just go straight down. And when it stops cutting, I know that I've got a small hollow in the middle here. And when I put the winding sticks on, it's going to rest on the two high points either side of this material. And therefore, you're just going to get a much more stable readout from the winding sticks. So looking at this again, that one shaving has thrown it out a massive amount compared to what it was before. So you might be able to see it if I stick it on camera now. So as I start lowering this camera, watch that back winding stick. Look at the horizontal lines on it to start with. So right about there. You see on the right hand side, it's pretty much touching that line, but on the left hand side, it's a little bit off on that silver one. 
So that's another great advantage of these metal winding sticks, they have those lines. And if I keep going down, I'll look at the right hand side until that silver bit just disappears on the black winding stick. On the left there, you see that it's still sticking proud by quite a bit. So it was pretty much perfect before and one shaving diagonally has done that. So what I'll have to do is reverse what I've done, do a diagonal shaving the opposite way and take that twist back out. So I'll get rid of the winding sticks. So this side and this side are high now, obviously, so we can do a diagonal stroke. Now, sometimes with this, what you can do is you can take this high point off and then this side's high, and then you have to go back to that one and then you just end up chasing your tail. If that happens, just bear in mind that when you remove material from both corners, you're effectively removing two high spots and you're removing that twist by two times. So if you find yourself in that stage where you just keep jumping between the two high edges, firstly, you can try and reduce the cut on your plane blade or start your plane in the middle of the board and just take off one of the high corners. Then you're only getting half an adjustment as opposed to an entire adjustment. So with this one, what I'm gonna do is back off the plane blade and I'm gonna go corner to corner, but with a really, really light cut. Okay, that was literally the smallest shaving possible, but I reckon that's all it'll take. And I'll just do a couple more down the center as well, just to make sure there's no peaks on there. Get the winding stick set up and check again. That's still a little bit high, so I'm gonna go again. Right, that was quite a big shaving, so I think that's gonna do it. And again, that has created a peak in the middle because now I'm able to take shavings out. And there we go, after one more pass, that's looking pretty good. And with both ends out of twist, it's always good to just check along the board as well. So keep the front one where it is and just move the back ones different places along the board. It's also worth mentioning here, just make sure that they are perfectly parallel across the width of the board as well. So yeah, it's all fine there. Let's move it up a little bit. Just move it up in about two inch intervals. Now, weirdly enough, of all places, I've actually got a small bump here by the looks of it. It's actually sitting proud ever so slightly. Yeah, this winding stick here is sitting a little bit proud. So again, because I've got a small curve on the blade, just a little nibble out of that area. Yeah, that's all it needed. So now we know that this component is all in one plane along the top. There's no twist in it whatsoever. But because we've been attacking these two corners, there's a small chance that we have a small arc in this timber. Even though it's all in line and there's no twist in it, we can still have a bump. And a way to check that is obviously with a straight edge. You can put it on there. And if you feel, yeah, look, it's pivoting in the middle. So we do have a small bump there. Like it doesn't even feel like the straight edge is rocking, but the fact that it pivots in that center section, again, I can hold it out here and it still pivots in the middle there, shows that there is a small high spot there. If you don't have a straight edge, you can also use the corner of your plane. Just rest it on there like that. And again, it's pivoting in that area. So that's nice and simple to get rid of. Again, it really helps having a curve on the blade here. Start the plane in the middle of the wood, straight down the middle, and then start making those shavings a little bit longer until you get on the entire length of the board and just take out any small potential bumps in the middle. So that would probably be it now if I put the plane on there. Yeah, I can hear, if I get my microphone nearby, that the whole plane is rubbing along the surface. Now another really good trick here I like to do is turn on a flashlight on your phone or a torch or whatever, tilt the plane up so you create a really dark shadow along this surface here, and then simply just shine a light behind. And I can see on that end there that we do have a bump around this area. <sighs> there was a bit of debris there, but let's try that again. Yes, yeah, so there is a bump around that area. If I shift it along here, very small pockets of light showing through, but really not enough to worry about. It's more the openness of the grain that's doing that. So yeah, we've got something going on here. So it just means that I'm gonna plane that top surface there. So yeah, that's a lot better there and along here. Yeah, that's as flat as it needs to be. Now, something I forgot to mention earlier is obviously not a lot of you are fortunate enough to have access to a massive Rubo workbench with a tail vise on it. So a great alternative to this would be to get yourself a drill, most of you have these in your garage, and some sort of drill guide. 
pop that in there and grab yourself a three quarter inch or 19 millimeter Forster bit and just drill a few dog holes in the top of your workbench. And then what you can do is grab yourself a Veritas Wonder Dog, which I'll overlay on the screen now, and also a pack of bench pups or bench dogs. And then what you have is a portable tail vise that you can use at any point on your workbench. And it's a great alternative to what I have here. This is just a bit more permanent. The Wonder Dog I used for years on my crappy workbench at home before I made this thing. It's obviously a lot easier using a tail vise, but in terms of budget, much easier to get yourself a Wonder Dog. All we've got to do now is get the edge square. So again, clamp it between the dogs. And again, we're just gonna get rid of the saw marks. And obviously here I'm going over that dead knot. So it's providing a little bit of resistance, but we've got a nice sharp plane here. Okay, right, saw marks are all removed on there. Now, what a lot of people are tempted to do now is get the winding sticks on there and check for twist again. And there is actually no point to that whatsoever. The reason we're being so perfectionist about this face edge here is because that is going to be our reference surface. Oh. Because that is going to dictate what all three of the rest of these sides do. So all we've got to do is get a square on here. <laughs> of course, that's the case. Right, so all we've got to do is get a square on there. And using the reliable face we've created here, we can just check if that edge is square or not. So looking along it, it's pretty good for the most part. Although by the looks of it, the square is slightly like rocking back like this, which means that this edge here is high by a very small amount. So a great way of checking if this is square or not is looking at a lovely light source. I've got a good old LED panel there. Is hold the wood up to the light like that and then pop your square on it. And it's going to make it very visible which side is higher. So we can see here that the right hand side of the material is higher. However, if I shift it towards the back, you may be able to see here that the left hand side is ever so slightly higher. So if that's the case, what you want to do is just grab a pen and scribble on the areas that are high. So it was the right hand side along here slightly and the left hand side up here. And then you can cramp that between your dogs again. And again, another advantage of having the curve on the blade is that I can focus it exactly on that area I want to remove. So shaving along there, shift it across, and there we go. One shaving, let's just check that again. And that is all it needed, which is pretty good. Now being square is all very well, much like being out of twist is all very well on the front face, but we still don't know if there's a bow in it whatsoever. So let's get a straight edge on there. Yeah, look, it's pivoting in the middle again. So we do have a high spot in there. So that means that all we've got to do is again, start the plane in the middle, do some small shavings, and then eventually elongate those shavings to take a full length shaving. And as you're doing this, just make sure that you're not throwing it too out of square as you go. So that's pretty good. You just got to check it as you go while removing that bow. Okay, that was a full length shaving. Get the straight edge on there. There you go, so it's scraping again, which means that it's touching on both corners. Then we'll just check to see if it's square again. So still all square there. Right, so the left-hand side is a little bit higher. So just do a small shaving there. Maybe just one more. Cool, right, that's all good along there. And we'll just do one last check for this. Yep, all scraping along there. And there you go, guys. That is how you plane a face side and face edge on a bit of timber, but do not go yet. Stay, because do not assume that that is the way to do these opposite faces. If you use the same methods we just used on making this edge square on the opposite face, you're going to start encountering various problems. Similarly, if you start planing this side flat, you're gonna encounter problems there as well. So I'll go over that in the next episode of how to do that properly. It is not the same rules. So anyway, that's the bit of oak done. I'm gonna attack the beach in its own time. Exactly the same rules of the beach, face side and then face edge. Obviously this face side is a little bit wider than it is on the oak here. So when you're planing it, maybe get a plane across the width of it as well and just make sure that there's no rock in it that way as well. And obviously if you find any high points, just scribble them out with a Jesus pen, but same rules apply. Get the twist out of it, make sure there's no bow in it, make sure there's no bow in it that way. Square off one edge and then watch my next video. I will see you then.